Welcome to the Catalyst Life Coaching Podcast with John Kim and Noelle Cordeaux. If you're inspired to begin your own life coaching practice or just want to learn a little bit more about what it's all about, visit journey.co. That's J R N I dot co for more information. Your adventure awaits. Hey guys, on this episode, we're going to talk about the value of doing things that scare you. Yay! What a Yay. great topic. Yes. So, should we start with? I want to know what scares you. Oh, so many things. And it changes, of course, as we change and grow and, you know, <laughs> conquer our fears and all that. But what are some things that scare you today? Well, let, let's say three things scary movies. Oh, that was a cop out. No, <laughs> it's tr- well, it's true. It's so true. I don't own a television. I get way too yeah. overstimulated. Even freaking commercials make me cry. Like I oh, can't. Oh my god, that's hilarious. Um, yeah. yeah, me too. Uh, I can't watch anything demonic or like what all these kids are watching today. I get nightmares. I can't do scary movies. Yeah. Um, other things that scare me is if, you know, a loved one is out and about in the world and I haven't had contact for a while, I start mm-hmm. to get sp- oh, that whole spinny freak out well, feeling. Yeah. Yeah. We're, uh, there's nothing worse than that worrying about someone that you care about, mm-hmm. right? Yep. Yep. And then I travel a lot. I'm a woman, I'm petite. So mm. sometimes if I'm not sure of my surroundings or I just, sure. you know, gracefully stumble <laughs> into a place yeah. where I'm looking around like, uh oh, <laughs> which I could totally see you doing because you're such a all the time wanderer. Uh, you say hi to strangers. Uh, you, you basically do all the things that uh, that um, you're taught not to do as a kid. All of them. All of yeah. them. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I I found Noel uh, walking into vans, petting puppies, like all of that <laughs> stuff. When we're Los Angeles, <laughs> I'm gonna get you one of those leashes that they put on children, but for adults. No, oh, that would be fun. <laughs> um, okay, great. Uh, for me, I would say, uh, what scares me today? One of the things that scares me is losing um, what. I and we have built. So, uh, of course, everything mm. with journey coaching, but also uh, the stuff that I'm doing with the angry therapist. Um, it terrifies me, and I don't know how I would lose it if one day I woke up and it was all gone and I had to go back to like, you know, getting a nine to five or working at a treatment center. I don't know if I could possibly do that. <laughs> oh, that's so interesting. That's yeah. So interesting. We can work with that a little bit from a coaching perspective because it's also conceptual. You know, the only reason that if you, you, the only way that you could possibly lose it is if it ceased to exist in your mind. Sure. Absolutely. And um, it's just a, it's just a kind of a running fear, I think, because I've experienced um, what life looks like when you don't have freedom. And then, of course, in the last, I don't know, maybe maybe four or five years experiencing a life where you actually do have freedom and, and support and all of that um, and, and a creative space, uh, I, I could never go back or I don't – I'm scared to go back to how things used to be. But you're right. I'm, it's, a lot of it is just in my head, of course. Yeah, it's totally in your head. And then there's me where I dream about working in a coffee house and I'm like, someone just tell me what to do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and I, 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 we're going to make that happen one day. I don't know oh, where, awesome. but um, <laughs> I, I I always remember you saying that, and I was like, okay, that's not going to be that hard. Instead of a um, name tag, it's just going to say "not in charge." Oh, that's hilarious! <laughs> not in charge. That's funny. Um, so, what else scares me? I think uh, you 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 know something that scares me, but also excites me is um, you know I ride my motorcycle all, almost every day. And of course, I write it to hit flow and it excites me, makes me feel alive. Uh, but, you know, the realities of uh, motorcycles and L.A. traffic and the crazy drivers. So uh, that does scare me a little bit. Yeah, you've scared me before when you've managed to flip off your motorcycle and land on your feet. Yeah, three. I went down three times. But you know what? I, know. Um, I have angels around me. I and I think the last thing is... Um, not having, you know, uh, right now I have amazing friends in my life and I can't imagine life without um, amazing friends. And so I've also experienced life back when I was married where I had no friends. And so it scares me to think that um, I would I would one day, you know, be alone, meaning not have not have good, meaningful friends. Yeah. So, you know, what's so interesting to me is that um, the motorcycle thing, you know, crashing. Sure. Yeah, that's mm-hmm. real. Got it. Sure. 
Um, the other two things, uh, having freedom, creating your own business, making friends, those are renewable resources. Mm, true. You mean, you mean one has the ability to, if those were lost, to recreate? Uh, all, all day. Yeah. 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 Which is actually um, probably a really great door to go into if you were coaching someone with this stuff is um, getting them aware and training them on how to uh, recreate so they're less afraid of things like that. Yeah, and, and a great lead in from my notes is um, a fantastic fun fact that most people who experience quote unquote success, success, authentic happiness, you know, they're stoked with their lives. They have all experienced an average of seven to eight major setbacks in life. Mm. And so yeah, not three, how, but seven to eight. Seven to eight. How does that land for you? Well, one, when you say that, it makes me feel like I'm already winning um, yeah. in that, you know, I don't think I've had, I mean, it depends on what you would define as a setback. But to me, I feel like, oh, then that means that we'll probably, prob I'll probably have more setbacks. And if I've survived uh, my previous setbacks, then I'm I'll survive what's to come. Um, I think also, uh, we put too much weight on a setback. So if a setback happens, we think that our life is over. Uh, but a lot of times the setback is just is a uh, a reboot or a recalibration or um, some kind of le lesson in learning for us to uh, go further. What is that saying that um, uh, by going slow you go f by going slow you go faster or something like that? I don't know, but yeah. that's I, I I can see value in that. Yeah, that taking your time and moving along and having mastery experiences and setbacks are part of life. Yes, and you know on this topic of why we should do things that scare us, it's so that we gain experience with setbacks. If, if so we that, never do things that scare us, then we are stunted, correct? It's correct. And, and it's also gaining experience with discomfort. We live in an instant gratification society and folks don't like to feel uncomfortable. And if they feel uncomfortable, they freak out. If they're tired, if they're hungry, if they're sad, if they're lonely, if they're isolated, they're on their phone, they're ordering takeout. Um, and, you know, sitting with discomfort is ultimately what allows everyone to overcome stress. Yeah. How do we know um, if we should lead into something that scares us or if we shouldn't because there's too much risk or danger? I think that's common sense to a large degree. Yeah. You know, I, I mean, it, it, it depends on your, on where you're at, on your threshold for risk, what you're trying to do. And you don't have to, you know, dive in head first. Um, so John and I, for our wonderful listeners are quite opposites. So there was a, long period of time where John would be like, Hey, I jumped off a cliff and I would be following mm -hmm. you like shit, fuck, shit, fuck. Like, right, okay, right. here we go. You know? Um, so John has a much higher threshold for risk than I do, but it makes a really good partnership because it pushes me out into the world, um, using what I would say would be Albert Ellis's description of emotional interval training. Mm -hmm. And in the world of coaching, that's actually a really valuable technique is for a coach to use Ellis's model and push their client to push out far into the world past their point of comfort and sit there for as long as you can stand it and then come back in. Yeah, there's um, there's actually there's two things that really helps me. One is Mel Robbins five second rule, and she's actually built an entire career off this one really simple but powerful concept, which also turned into a book. And now she's speaking and all that. And it's basically uh, she was at a very dark place in her life and nothing was happening. And she was, uh, you know, de depressed and feeling hopeless. And she had this revelation where um, she's just going to do what scares her and only give herself five seconds. If not, uh, fear kicks in like tear gas and nothing happens. So it doesn't matter. It's not finishing something. It's just starting. So whether you're hitting post on a blog post or you are, you know, doing a video or you're, you know, uh, quitting a job, that, that instinct that you have that you want to do something, um, she says it takes about five seconds where you then get too afraid to do it. And so that's one thing that's really helped me is I – 
that's why I pull the trigger so fast. And a lot of times I probably shouldn't. And I just do because it's like within five seconds, I'm just like, you know what, let's just, um, let's just do it and, 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 you know, see what happens as we're doing it and learn. Oh, and those are my favorite days because my phone starts ringing immediately. And I'm like, oh, I wonder what John did. <laughs> awesome. Right. Um, but, but you know what comes with this is that you grow in your capacity for risk and discomfort. And risk and discomfort are what allows you to propel, propel forward in life to places that most people never, ever get to. Yes. But if you're looking at it through the lens of curiosity and discovery, not panic, fight or flight, or I'm dying. You know. Well, think think about your CrossFit days. Yeah. And, you know, think about like, I know when I first started, box jumps were my enemy. Mm, sure. Yeah, and, it's a big one. And I was, you know, I was, I was afraid. And what my trainer did was he held a yardstick on the ground and said, okay, jump. And he marked on the yardstick where I just was able to jump physically mm -hmm. into the air. And then we held it up against the box. And I was able to see for myself that I cleared that box. It was just the physical box itself in front of me that was scary to me. But then once I knew I could jump higher than the box, the fear went away. Yes. And that took, I'm sure, you know, many, many practices and, mm -hmm. and lots of stutter steps and all of that. Um, but I think, you know, giving yourself that experience then slowly starts to dissolve the fear because you could think about jumping on a box and visualize it all day, but you actually experienced it. Yes. And so what we're talking about here really specifically is the concept of mastery experiences. Mm -hmm. Mastery experiences are the building blocks of self-efficacy. And self-efficacy is the idea that if you, there's something out there in the world that you want to do and don't know how to do it, you have the tools that you need to figure it out one step at a time. Yes. So it, is it almost like trusting in yourself and your story and, what, and your ability? It's trusting in yourself and your story and your ability and also proving to yourself that you can do the thing. So, you know, going back to this culture of instant gratification that we live in, you know, I can talk to somebody and they might say to me, you know, I, my, my lifelong dream is to move to Spain, but that's too big. I can't do it. You know, no way. Well, in reality, if you took a, a series of years and planned your life and oriented every single thing that you're doing towards the goal of moving to Spain, one small step, one small mastery experience after the next would eventually get you there. People yeah. aren't willing to adhere to grit. They want instant gratification and they're not in it for the long haul that actually takes you from point A to point B. Yeah, absolutely. And, you know, the other way I look at this is um, being a storyteller. Uh, I'm a big fan of Joseph Campbell's Hero's Journey. And I think that, um, you know, the beginning of that process is your call to adventure. And it's going from comfort to discomfort. But if you never take that call, right, like if, if Luke Skywalker never left that village or, or you know, whatever, um, then there's no story. There's no moment of you coming back to the village changed. Uh, there's no opportunity to slay dragons. And so I always think about when I'm scared, what's going to be the story because the fear is going to lead to some kind of call to adventure. And then what's going to be the story that this produces? Um, if I do not go, there is no story. And I think if life you, is, if yeah. I don't go. And I, I think life is all about stories. Yeah, it's super true. If you do not go, there is no story. And yeah. when I'm working with clients, it's important to think about this in terms of chapters. Sure. Absolutely. Because, every, yeah, the, the story goes in chapters. So, you know, looking at my own life, um, remember that time when I quit my job and got married and then left the husband that I just married a month right. later and moved right. to L.A. by myself? <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I remember very well. That I mean, was you must crazy. Have been, you, yeah, it was crazy. and You must have been terrified. I was terrified. I was completely yeah. terrified. I had yeah. just quit a super stable job. I had just gotten married for the second time. And then I bounced. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> yes. 
and everybody thought I was nuts. And, and it was hard. Like those early months were hard. I was yeah, exhausted. I was scared. I was freaked out all the time. You know, I, you know, I'm, I felt like that caterpillar that's like, why am I building this cocoon? What am I doing? This is compulsive. Yeah. This is weird. Yeah. And no idea that it was going to turn into a butterfly. No clue. Is, is part of, was part of that fear of uncertainty and instability and not knowing and no answers and all of it. It's kind of like, like swimming in the ocean where you're just dropped out of a plane. Yes, yeah. it was exactly like that. And yeah. I had been in structure and stability in academia for so long. And right, I had been right. so conditioned that this is the way that I was freaking out. Yeah, it, it's really hard to lean into not knowing. I mean, that's never going to be easy. It's never going to be easy. And that's why we go back to the mastery experiences, to the self-efficacy, to looking from a strengths-based perspective at what went right. When have you done hard things before? What was the positive outcome? Mm -hmm. When did things go well? What you can, what can you reasonably believe to happen in the future? One of the things that you say a lot that I really love is, um, is this going to matter five years from five years from now? Mm -hmm. And sometimes when I hear that, the way that I see it is, um, I'm scared to do something. Uh, you know, is this going to matter five years from now? And I think about that. And then what I'm afraid of actually becomes smaller, because it's not going to matter. So me taking the leap is not going to be that big of a deal. You know, um, it can be but but a lot of the times the things that we're afraid of aren't huge life changing things like we what, no. you, what, you, what you experience. Yeah. In reality, they're not going to matter a month from now. Right, right They're You know, they're really not. And, and so much of what keeps us stuck is two things, negative self talk and fear of others perceptions. Sure, absolutely. I have spoken with so many clients who have said that the thing that they're the most afraid of is the judgment of their parents. Mm. Yeah, that makes me, I mean, I, I know it's true and it makes me sad. Yeah, adults, you know, that they're waiting for their parents to die before they, you know, come out in their chosen sexuality, before they, right. um, you know, quit the job, take the trip, blow their life savings traveling the world, you know, go to South America to go backpacking. It's it's that approval piece that is so heavy. Yeah, and that means you're basically not living your life, you're living someone else's life. Mm-hmm. Yep. Which which is sad. I, I think that the, one of the saddest things in the world is wasted potential. So people who you know we're talking about you know doing doing things that scare you and stuff. People who who um, don't do things, who stay in comfort, and who live life according to you know their parents or friends or society, and then they wake up one day realizing that they never really lived. They've just existed. Exactly. And another really great technique here is to follow your fear three levels down. So, you know, let's take an example of, um, you know, a client of, I don't want to work in corporate life, which is something I hear a lot. I'd actually like to become a life coach, which I hear a lot. Um, but my mother, father, spouse, friends, everybody are judging me and they think I'm wrong or bad or foolish. And so I say, okay, you know, let's take that as a premise. Let's say that came true and all of those people judged you as foolish. What would be the worst thing that would happen? And then you take that answer and say, okay, so now they perceive you as foolish. <laughs> like, what's the worst thing that'll happen after that? And what's the worst thing that'll happen after that? And you drill it all the way down until the person sits there and says, well, I guess really nothing's going to change. <laughs> yeah. So you know what that is, is that's the whole idea that we're afraid of the, the shadow that's cast by our own hand. And by you asking that question, well, what's the worst that's going to happen? It starts to dissolve the shadow. And what you're left with is you're just staring at a hand. Exactly. Right. Correct. Exactly I want to correct. I want to share my box jump story before we end because it just happened because uh, it lights up with this fear. So um, 
I've, you know, as a 46 year old man, I've only been in a fist fight one time. And that was like in seventh grade, it lasted like four seconds. And recently, I was thinking, God, I, 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 you know, I don't want to go out and fight someone on the streets or anything like that. But I was like, you know, with gloves and stuff, I want to know what it feels like to actually get punched in the face because that scares me and I, I'm afraid to fight, you know. And so um, I went <laughs> to the gym and my friend Pete, who's like 225 pounds, all muscle, and he's a boxer. Um, I said, listen, let's go three minutes and I want you to, you know, I don't want you to kill me, but I want you to like really punch me in the face. And, and so we put on... Um, well, I put on headgear and gloves. He didn't. And for three minutes, we were just swinging at each other. And, of course, you know, um, I didn't get any swings in. And he he punched me until I basically fell on the floor. And I, after that, I actually felt alive. I felt like, oh, <laughs> what I was terrified of, um, I, I'm a little bit less terrified of. And this is what it feels like to get punched in the face. And so I did it in a safe way, but I needed that experience because I was afraid um, to get into a fight or to get beaten up out on the streets. And this whole time, I've been holding my breath because I know Pete. And I'm like, oh, God, John. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's hilarious. Uh, this kind of stuff, by the way, follows me everywhere I go. Um, now, this doesn't mean that I'm suddenly fearless and I'm Mr. Fight Club because I am still scared to fight. But that experience has shifted something in me where I'm a, a little bit less afraid. That's awesome. That's yeah. awesome. I love that. I absolutely love that. And, you know, I think there's a lot to be said for the mind-body connection there. Oh, sure. Absolutely. And, and the way that physically doing something to break down your fear barriers, physically getting out into the world, physically facing it is yes. what's going to help you with the mental part. Yes. And guys, I don't know what your fear is, but um, maybe starting today, you could think about uh, or maybe actually doing something where you are going to uh, start running towards your fears. Awesome. Be well, thank you. <laughs>